Okay, so we go, ready? We go online? This is meeting with Katrin, uh, okay. I can start, right? Hello, everyone. It's the second day or the third day already from the Global Social Business Summit 2021. We are at the, at Kenya Life, at the, uh, at the Mount Kenya University. We are here connecting all over the world. Thanks to listen to us and thanks to be with us. For the next one hour is to learn or to learn. Lifelong learning is the most important aspect of our life. And we are, I'm very happy to have some partner with me to see a little bit how to inspire us and how to learn more. And all what we want to do is to learn now for the next 60 minutes, what it means green inclusive finance. And uh, this is when I have my first uh, 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 moderation partner, my first uh, 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 contributor, we have David with us. David, you can explain us very deeply what we should understand and what we should learn is we talk about green inclusive finance. Yeah, with great pleasure. Uh, um, should I go straight into the topic, right? Absolutely. Start with the topic, lift us up, and then I come back to your personal uh, background. But uh, you are you can like lift perfect. us into yeah. the topic. Yeah, perfect. So thanks a lot, first of all, to having me, and thanks for uh, the time you're spending to listen to, uh, to listen to us and for the engagement you will have afterward, you know, to make uh, these small seeds grow into big trees. Um, so what about green inclusive finance? So of course, uh, is the sum of three words, yeah, green, inclusive, and finance, yeah. Uh, the interesting is that our three ingredients that generate something new. So what means uh, finance? We know we want to foster, you know, economic opportunities. Yeah, um, we want to fulfill needs. Yeah, of people. When we speak about inclusive, it means so which kind of people? Yeah, so the people the typical needed the most. Yeah, so poor household, smallholder, micro, small and medium enterprises. And so when we speak normally about inclusive finance is providing you know financial means for economic opportunity or needs for people that typically are excluded yeah and that's typically uh, is what is referred to a double bottom line yeah finance so we want to provide finance for economic opportunity and generate a social uh, impact positive hopefully now when we speak about green inclusive finance is basically is how to do inclusive finance in a changing world yeah, uh, that is subject to climate change, to biodiversity loss and uh, over exploitation of resources. So how can we still include people that normally are excluded by the financial sector or by economies in such a way we can include them for through? So because climate change is gonna affect the one that are the poorest one, the most excluded one, yeah? And the, the, the lack of uh, you know, financial resources and human resources from these people typically force them to do or to implement unsustainable practices. Yeah? In, in a changing world where we know where biodiversity is going to be lost, so putting in peril uh, food security, where climate change is going to eat into the plate of everyone, is going to basically affect uh, and increase higher the risk of the poorest people. So green inclusive finance is to make inclusive finance and actually if you think bigger finance work under a scenario of climate change and biodiversity loss. What does it mean? It means to create resiliency, first of all. It means to decrease vulnerability of the people that are by the challenge of our time. So climate change, biodiversity loss, exploitation, over exploitation of resources. How do you do that? Yeah, first of all, you need to understand what are the risks these people are affected to? Yeah, for example, to droughts, to flood, to reduction of capacity to generate food, to poor, to lack of access to uh, water or sanitation, lack of poor access or unlivable access to energy. Yeah, and then try to provide solution. Yeah, solution in such a way you know that this missing part that are us today that we're going to increase more and more due to climate change will instead be reduced by providing 
good services in which what do i mean by good services by improving the practice and technology they use yeah for example transforming uh, you know a cultivation of monocrops uh, on chemicals the typical things uh, we do into a diversify agroforestry and uh, organic uh, with organic fertilizer cultivation that's green inclusive finance just an example why do you say it's green inclusive finance because it fulfills three main objectives one it generates resilience as we said is the entry point we want to reduce vulnerability to ensure economic and social inclusion second it generates uh, ecosystem benefit you are replanting trees yeah you offset uh, carbon emission you support the creation of local biodiversity and third, you generate economic opportunity. That means you do it in a sustainable way because trees, for example, are gonna provide nutrients for the soil. And in this way, you're gonna make it grow better your plants. You're gonna need less chemicals and you're gonna possibly sell to a higher price uh, because you can eventually certify. That's what Green Inclusive Finance is, is about providing this kind of solution, generate economic opportunity, fulfill needs, generate resiliencies and protect ecosystem yeah. last but not least uh, that's are the product of course view what you want to do you want to provide solution and then the question is who is going to channel this solution and there were normally financial intermediary institute play a role because this money need to reach uh, people they want to implement this kind of solution and second the money need to be knowledgeable or where they goes yeah on which practice and which technology and that is the and that is the, the the realm where how do you make advanced financial service provider that you provide money to people typically excluded by the normal banking sector by having a strategy yeah to generate resiliences and to generate positive ecological impact being able to assess the risk not only financially yeah but also how do you impact the ecosystem? How do your clients are exposed to resiliency? And now your portfolio yeah, is exposed to such a risk and then provide solution by basically including this kind of risk into risk management, into product offer and into partnership with local ecosystems like provider, technology provider, etc. And last but not least, because we have colleagues from international banking on the, on the floor, is also how do you link that with the standard finance? How a guy is coming from BNP Paribas, for example, would like to refinance a portfolio that is green and then eventually resell this asset to someone like me now sitting in Paris that want to buy this impact, maybe even a higher price. This is what about is a green inclusive finance. Okay. Uh, I repeat it a little bit so we understand it. That's why we're here. People want to learn. People want to see it. Uh, so, and also to learn more about you, David. Um, as I know, you are uh, before uh, the action groups at the European microfinance platform. Now you turn into the next level, what we call green inclusive finance for micro credit to micro. Let, let's say it on the resilience on, 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 I would even call it permaculture on microbiological aspects. You have to see it holistic in a much broader way than before. It's not a single uh, vertical thinking anymore. It's a holistic thinking. Is it correct? But who is behind this whole stuff? Is it out of the green deal of the European Union? Is it out of the SDGs who are giving us the flow of the of the cash flow around the globe uh, as uh, um, as we designed it through the SDGs about the ESG? So who are behind it uh, to setting a framework like this? Is it you alone in your in your living room, or um, how how you design the green inclusive finance sector? Thanks a lot for that. So, um, you know, is a, is, a, is a transformation of the full ecosystem that touch uh, providers locally of inputs, uh, buyers locally of local production, refinancing internationally or locally, uh, consultant, yeah, they can support uh, the implementation of project uh, technology, yeah, they can help to, you know, to assess uh, the climatic risk, for example, and verify that something green is really green. Yeah, is about uh, academics. It's about research. What it works, but it does not work. Honestly, yeah, not just to make marketing because we have a big challenge in front of us. So we really need to find what works. Yeah, and uh, and it's about, uh, of course, regulators. Yeah, it's about who set a bit the role that everyone needs to respect. But it's also about uh, 
um, uh, opportunities. Yeah, it's about opportunities that each one uh, is uh, or should be willing to grab to set the biggest uh, challenge of our time. So it's, it's, a, it's really, it's not just one entity. So I um, yeah. have the pleasure, and let me just add that because we're doing that in, uh, in, in practice. I have the pleasure to uh, co-head the group that is called the Green Inclusive and Climate Smart Finance Action Group. You see it written there. Yeah. That is actually is a multi-stakeholder um, group within the European microfinance platform. It is exactly composed by all this set of stakeholders that since eight years has been trying to join together, has been joined together exactly to try to define to define common standard and approach because everyone realized already more than 10 years ago that that is mandatory to be done, but you cannot do it alone. So regulator, private investor, et cetera, are joined exactly forces to find what is a common framework where everyone can act. So that I think is very interesting. There is a movement behind that is here to last. And David, you are from Italy. You are European nomad. You told me you're in Berlin, in Paris. So what's your personal commitment behind this? Is it your job? Is it you're an entrepreneur? You're an idealist? You're a promoter? What's your personal uh, power behind it. So thanks for that. For sure, I'm an idealist because I think that the idea is what push action. Yeah, action without idea are quite weak, and so you need to be moved uh, by what are your own personal objective, what you think are really uh, uh, the things that make sense to your life and to the life of your own society. I'm originally a physicist and a mathematician, so I've been starting doing that because I thought really personally that I want to know, to understand how things work. So I was pushed by that in that study. And then at certain point I've been com confronted with, uh, you know, injustice like social inequality, uh, the climate change and biodiversity then became the idea to say, okay, what can we do uh, out of that? I have been, uh, as I said, I'm leading this, uh, uh, this institute. I've been founding a company that's called Yapu Solution that you see are behind, that's a company that exactly provide technology solution to assess climatic risk and to include that into you know, the loan process of various financial intermediaries. I'm a researcher um, at the CERMI, is a central resource associated too, where since 10 years, I'm really studying how the green inclusive finance work, what are the drivers, um, what are the benefits and what are the challenge. Yeah. Thanks, David. And we all here because we are the Global Social Business Summit, the idea of social business, what we see the opportunity in some sentence about social business and you work. So I, we all know microfinance and we all know the father of microfinance. We see the difference interpretation of microfinance is a little bit like it, uh, you sell sometimes chicken for vegetarian food. So it's was misinterpreted. Uh, I, uh, we are here to make a clear a very clear statement about social business. What's your role in social business and what you could see the role of social business in your work? Look, uh, I think uh, that uh, we used to call uh, this green inclusive finance as a triple bottom line finance. I think that was an interesting idea, but maybe it's a bit old. Nowadays, you cannot distinguish anymore uh, social from environmental. Yeah, you cannot any have any social impact without taking into account uh, how that is going to affect the planet or how the planet is going to affect the people you are trying to provide positive social impact. So I think it's really, there is not really a separation. So any social impact, any, sorry, any social um, uh, business should include, uh, you know, the aspect of environmental aspect only even to achieve the social impact. Yeah, because nowadays any social impact will basically destroyed due to the challenge we are living this 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 year this this century so i think it's totally integrated so for me uh, social 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 business is what uh, green inclusive finance is financing in a way in a, in an environment where the climate and the uh, ecosystem are changing and being degraded yeah. so it's completely it's inclusive integrated. inclusive our you know we have the principles we have seven principles in social business of course, one is always to be environmental conscience, another one is do it with joy. So we have our principles. So, but one of the, our principles is also when the investor get back the money, no money flows anymore. So we have zero dividend company. So do you see an appetite in the green uh, inclusive finance for uh, crazy guys like we are in the radical thinking to say, we do business, 
we make even profit, we're fighting for the having a little bit profit, but then we reinvest our profit and we don't give a, a dividend. Um, is this something what you say that's totally crazy, doesn't work? So no, I think I think uh, for green inclusive finance, dividend should be paid to nature. So you generate dividends and then the nature should be received this dividend. Is the player where we don't so we live and we generate food thanks to nature. We breathe thanks to nature. So someone needs to pay it back at a certain point. So if you make profit, better you share your profit with the guy that has been suffering the most. So I would say in this century, maybe a provocative view, a social business is the one that uh, share, generate dividend, generate profit and generate the, the profit, share the profit with dividend for nature. Yeah, that's so a good one. The the soil getting it is the hair. Yeah, the hair, the background. What and, there, and there maybe, maybe exactly, I'm sorry, just then to go back to your, to your provocative thought. And if is, that is possible, and if we can verify that, and if we can show that, so I'm totally, believe that there are a lot of investors that would like to jump in. Yeah, if you can share that we are they're sharing their profit, not with their shareholder, but with the main shareholder that any profit oriented institute has, it is nature. I think it would be a nice additional seat on the board to receive the dividend. Yeah, so the nature. That's exactly what we always talk about. That's the core aspect about financial uh, uh, characters, uh, the financial world. From resilience, I would add on to be regenerative. So the aspects what we should have in the green inclusive finance, it should be regenerative, it should be net positive, not only net carbon emission. But that brings me to the next body in our talk, and that's Alex. Alex is a banker, he's working at PNB Paribas. The white elephant in the room will say, Oh my god, PNB Paribas, that is the most finance of heavy CO2 emission in the last 20 years. They will be playing about bankers a little bit like Hammer at the car. So, but BNP Paribas really did the mind uh, 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 change and the mind change stuff. Alex, uh, you are, uh, you look, we meet once in Paris, you look to me like a real joyful uh, a man who really want to do the best for the best. Why are you working in a bank and what's are your personal purpose? Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Hans, for the for the question, I hope that you that you can hear me well. Very um, good. The line is great. super cool. Um, so it's it's a very personal question, of course, um, and and I think that's for as, as many people joining the the inclusive finance industry. Uh, Professor Yunus played a very important role. Um, the way we could see how oh, finance um, tools can be honest, you know, for the for the power of of, um, of uh, actually, you know, helping and you know supporting the supporting the, the bottom of the pyramid is you know is uh, of course uh, accelerating. Um, what is uh, the, you know the bank BNP Paribas is actually more uh, aware of its responsibility you know as economic actor you know it's it's something it's not about um having a mission it's about being able to understand what is your impact on you know the full value chain and it's something quite new for you know for for traditional businesses but starting with the responsibility you know csr corporate social responsibility but the responsibility part is really the key so how do you measure how do you measure and once you measured how do you Offset, you know, the negative, uh, the negative impact that you uh, that you have on the on the business that you that you pursue, and and of course, you know, it, it was said uh, numerous uh, numerous times. Um, but if you don't care about the environment you you are doing business in, then you know you are just shooting yourself in the foot. Um, personally, um, I as as David said, I think that we are more and more uh, conscious that everything is linked, so social and environmental. So it doesn't really make any more you know sense to work on pure social projects uh, which is the way you know inclusive finance was you know uh, historically and originally uh, you know uh, launched and now we really want to embed you know this environmental component into into it and 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 our role in the bank is to be able to show and to 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 prove to our colleagues and to you know everyone else that it it actually works you know so, so it's still um, applying this research and development, um, you know, mindset 
and say, okay, we can do it on a very particular uh, set of people who, uh, who are actually the most vulnerable to climate change, which are the smallholder farmers. So if we can evidence that there is uh, actual um, a, a linkage between the refinancing that we provide and the impact that we can generate, so resilience uh, um, and, and improved adaptation capacity um, to you know to the to the uh, to the clients of those uh, microfinance institutions, then it makes it means that you know it, it worked and it can actually be scaled up and it can be used for you know different types of uh, of sector. Super, uh, Alex. We got a lot of questions already from the audience, but I want to dig down a little bit on P and Paribas and on the stuff. I, you know, we start the journey 2017 together, and it was a very tough beginning of the journey. Claudia Belli and myself had a big debate. Oh, can P and Paribas really play a role? You prove it that you play a super role on it. I just give you this feedback, but I still want to always address this white elephant of the P and Paribas. You know, you are such a big player in Europe. You are the number one in Europe in industrial banking at the moment. So why you should take care about Africa and the micro farmers and stuff like this. But I see it that the most people in you who I meet, they are really something I call the BNB Paribas, the planetary bankers, bankers who are really taking care on the holistic view in the way. So I, uh, I hope uh, that the, the, the public opinion uh, improve it a little bit more. What are you doing? The big mindset, what we have to, to, to change it. So you are from the CSR department directly, inclusive of finance. Let, give me a little bit of a hint on this, what David just uh, uh, explained us on the green inclusive finance and what it means, for example, for Africa or for a particular way. And I give you one question from the chat already. Let me see a little bit. And it was um, one of the questions of the chat was um, about can you imagine that green inclusive finance can operate as a social business? This was question number one, and I address it to you, Alex, and uh, listen to you once again. Okay, uh, no, thanks, thanks a lot. Um, so maybe starting with answering this question, of course, it can operate as a, as a social business. You know, um, most of the uh, inclusive finance service provider uh, are basically as, as uh, have been built uh, based on the principle of social businesses then they've evolved you know into sometimes something else uh, but you know more or less closer to the to the to the original concept um, when you want to increase your own client's resilience you are actually um, increasing the, the 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 likelihood of you know them developing their own activity um, there's there's no reason why uh, the social business model uh, sh you know should should not work in the way that um, um, the objective is not to look for you know more and more clients because we know that the clients are already there you know it it's it's not about you don't have to create a market uh, whose needs um, are not addressed because you know what kind of needs they already have so basically. Um, the um, again because it's 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 very much done as the continuity of the of the approach of Professor Yunus, just putting a little bit more uh, emphasis on the environmental uh, point from a risk management point of view and from a product point of view, as David said. So if you finance, um, you know, solar, the the hydrator, or you know, um, or you know, very small, you know, a lot of you know, small small devices or specific for for agriculture. Um, it's 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 one part of the of the equation, and the other one is helping microfinance institutions to better uh, manage their climate and biodiversity risk. So again, it has nothing to do to the to the finality, you know, to the to the end um, of the of the business. If it's a you know a normal business or, or, or social business, what you want is just to address the needs of the people who are today the more vulnerable to climate change. Yeah. I, I I catch it since you are since 2016, you are with PNP Paribas, and you are always also in the heart of the most pressing needs in Africa. You so in microfinance, you are analyzed. You, you you really know what you're doing. So, do you see um, the way that is you are low at PNP Paribas, or is it the is it the movement inside PNP Paribas really saying, hey, we did understand as a bank our role and you really want to play it on the on the role to make it happen 
and how to make it happen in particular in Africa. Maybe you can share it a little bit about and the opportunity of green inclusive finance for Africa as well, out of your experience. Okay, so maybe to, to answer to the first question, which is more, more general uh, of um, how the bank is actually behaving and, and acting on those, on those, um, uh, on those uh, concepts, you need first to be reminded that Bin Pepe is a bank. So it's as a social, it, it's, of course, it's not a social business, uh, but a social business needs to care for its, for its clients, right? And the, play, the, the clients of BNP Paribas uh, are clients from, you know, the, the, you know the, 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 a lot of different industries. Where you get the very polluting ones, and you get also, uh, you know, the very green ones. And 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 as as a universal bank, at the beginning, when you don't select this type of, of, of criteria, you work with everyone. So now you need to adapt a, a different grid and say, okay, I continue to. You know, to fund you to to to, to be uh, you know your main banker. If you can show me that you are actually you know transitioning from one model to the other, right? Just to say, you, we are not an impact manager. We cannot say from you know uh, tomorrow that we stop financing you know everything which is you know carbon and fuel based uh, industry. Our mission and and our uh, yeah our core mission as as a, as a business is to again uh, to care for our clients and to continue to provide them with uh, financial solutions. Yeah. What we want to, again, what we want to prove them is that uh, we can generate added value, not only uh, by, you know, generating, you know, profits and dividends. And actually, if we, if we, if we generate too much of them, it's creating additional um, inequalities and pollution and all, but we can do it in a, in a, let's say in a very, in a much more responsible way. And, and we want to show again that this way is possible. So we want to embark our, our corporate clients, even you know, the big ones uh, that have a strong environmental impact in the agro sector, for instance, in, in, in Africa and, sh and, and, and show them that uh, a small, uh, small lot of farmer in the, in the North forest of, uh, of, uh, of Côte d'Ivoire is actually able to understand that if he doesn't change his agricultural practices um, and, and doesn't use, you know, what we call the natural bait solution, in five years, it will be out of business and it will have an impact on all the value chain. So we are, again, we are trying to, to build business cases to show that there is an, uh, an alignment of, of interests uh, between everyone from the small order farmers to the financial institution to um, to the uh, to the off taker and to the to the to the bank that you know uh, at the you know at the very end of the of the chain. Yeah. Now, and uh, let me also share this. You know, uh, PMP Paribas is currently supports close to two billion two billion assets on social business and microfinance, spread across directly investment and funds in over fifty countries. My personal experience with PMP Paribas was really great in the last four years, really, uh, because normally you also can focus with every single resource what we have on the speculative super startups, or you can just focus on anything, but you do it also in a holistic way, and you have a great departure on this. So just to, to give this, David, uh, you worked together with PMP Paribas already, did you know before? Which role uh, uh, is your organizations and is uh, connecting with uh, PMB Paribas or how is it between you both? Yeah, thanks for the question. So, uh, yes, we have been working uh, with the BMP Paribas, uh, first of all, on a light touch base as part of uh, uh, a transition that I try to push since a while, exactly include, including green in each financial transaction. And, uh, and they'll be starting joining the discussion of the group that I was mentioning before. Yeah, so the Green Inclusive and Climate Smart Finance Action Group to try to define common standards of uh, exactly what Alex was referring to is uh, what does it mean to do a, a social audit that also, sorry, an audit to an, a financial audit to an institution to also include uh, not only social elements, but also uh, green elements. That's where we start to discuss. And then it's the interesting thing that the BNP Pariva uh, did basically the journey as we used to do, do not arm, do good, try to find solution yeah, in their own processes. So we started you know, to say, okay, let me try to understand if I'm arming the ecosystem by providing financing. yeah, And then uh, let's say, okay, let me see if I can find uh, some way to do good. yeah, And then we start working together on a project that is called MEBA. It is called Microfinance for Ecosystem-Based Adaptation. It's a project that's uh, with Yapu Solution, 
We have been leading uh, for the United Nations for Environment. It is a project that aims to generate uh, resiliency, uh, to foster finance for smallholder uh, while protecting ecosystem. It's a long project, lasts for eight years. And in the second phase, BNP Paribas joined forces with us by supporting uh, two implementation out of 13, one three that we're implementing, uh, one in Senegal and one in Colombia. Yeah, and there we start really knowing better each other. We're really working together on the part of a project under the umbrella of United Nations for Environment. And that is where uh, BNP Paribas, I think, started to look for solution. Yeah, because at the end of this project, I really think it's interesting because uh, is where uh, a project finish and then normally, yeah, as good as it is, uh, yeah, maybe no one is going to take it up. Yeah, but instead, uh, uh, our colleague just, you know, told me, look, that looks very good, good avenue for us. Uh, we also would like to do more and to include not only climate change adaptation, but also biodiversity conservation. And there were basically start a project that was just private funded by the BNP Paribas to basically extend the project MEBA before mainly by public funds to uh, support uh, training and technical solution. We've been working with 35 institutions, three, five in 13 countries to understand what means biodiversity risk yeah, for small holders, uh, as well as for financial institution. And there where it start a long journey. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and this long journey was all started somehow as Alex already told, I don't know how is it about you, David, about the inspiration of the Grameen family of Professor Yunus uh, when they started 40, nearly 40 years ago or 45 years ago, uh, to start with student and with Professor Yunus to build the Grameen Bank and the Grameen uh, uh, movement. And uh, as we may know, Grameen means belongs to village. It was always holistic in a way. It was always in a way how to see it inclusive. Uh, Abdul, my friend, you are here with us and listen the whole time and uh, thanks a lot. Uh, explain us a little bit who is Grameen Trust first, okay? So we understand the organization in, um, in this Grameen Bank, Grameen Trust, so there's more than 50 Grameen organizations in Bangladesh, but who is Grameen Trust? Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, I would like to say about the, what David already mentioned, green inclusive finance. It's a, it's a new field. And it emerged from the combination of basically microfinance plus climate change. And I would like to just tell her from day one, Grameen Bank has started green financing. I will give more examples later on. So as you know, Professor Inus, when he founded Grameen Bank and provided financial services to the poorest women in the rural areas. And on the basis of the success of this Grameen Bank, many of the individuals and organizations around the world from different countries approached to Nobel Reader Professor Yunus to replicate this model in their countries, in their regions. But as we know, Grameen Bank is a specialized bank created by past a special law in the parliament. That law does not permit Grameen Bank itself to operate outside Bangladesh. But to fulfill the demand of the people or organization around the world, Nobel Laureate Professor Inus established Grameen Trust as a not-for-profit organization in 1989 to replicate Grameen model in other countries, to provide technical assistance, training, and all sorts of support to promote the Grameen type microcredit program around the world. This is the mission of the Grameen Bank. And uh, since inception, we have two types of replication program. One, we call it replication through local partners. 
that means local NGOs, MFI foundations become a partner. We provide them training, technical assistance, and all sort of support to replicate Gamin model. Then another window has opened. There are some organizations, those who have a financial resources, all sorts of logistical arrangements they have, but they don't have expertise to replicate Gamin model. So that's why we started direct implementation. We send some Grameen personnel to the particular countries and they uh, recruit the local staff, tend up them and start to implement the Grameen program. And after a certain period, when we observed the local management is capable to run this type of program, we handed over this program to the local management, our export back to Bangladesh. This is direct implementation program. So as of today, we have 153 partners in 42 countries. And we have 19 direct implementation program uh, in 16 countries. Out of 19 program, we handed over 13 to the local management and six are still in going, ongoing program. So, uh, and most of the direct implementation program, and that is, that is also the unique features of the activities of Grameen Trust. Most of the direct implementation microfinance program, what we have implemented in different countries, we run this microfinance as a social business, following the principle of the social business. So uh, these are the brief activities of- Yeah, and, and Abdul, that's very interesting because one of the very latest super success is Grameen America. Yeah. And where PMP Paripa was really an important player to help. Um, so you also work with PMP Paripa on this. But Grameen America is doing extraordinary good at the moment because it's a clear replication. And yeah. if I repeat it, what you're doing is you have your 16 decisions, you have the model, you have the experience, and, and the Grameen Bank for over 45 years. And I know. The replication is very precisely if you replicate it as the original, the product and the benefit is very clear. Some doesn't replicate it very uh, precisely, and but it was all out not to be expand in the world. Is more the Grameen Trust was founded because the demand of people ask you to help you in Kosovo, in Costa Rica, in even in America was so bold. Um, then it's going on. So this field of green inclusive finance, you just told us in the beginning, this was there from the very beginning and you want to show us some examples. So maybe you can go on the examples oh. where you say this is what we are now with David and with others are promoting as green inclusive finance service next to microfinance and uh, share us a little bit of the success story or the, the best um, uh, aspects about green inclusive finance. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, what I have already mentioned that from the day one, when it was the project of the central bank, it's not a bank at all. Grameen has started uh, green inclusive finance, but we never claim that we are providing green inclusive finance. That's because name is not uh, important to the Grameen, the, what we did, that is the important things. So what we are doing basically, if we look as because from the day one, we know, and if you look at the uh, uh, history and the development of Grameen Bank, and uh, if you read the literature wrote by Professor Mohamed Yunus. From day one, we think due to the climate change or global warming, uh, uh, the members of the Grameen or the clients of the MFIs become the first victims of the effects of this climate change. So we should address these issues. 
And in the year 1981-82, we have started a plantation movement among the Grameen members. Uh, uh, we uh, try to uh, motivate them, give the orientation to them to plant more trees, to uh, for preparing the homestead gardening. And we have distributed millions of millions of saplings to the members. And uh, from that uh, plantation program or movement, uh, uh, we have they have they have get different types of uh, benefit we have uh, we have getting uh, from them. That is uh, due to the if you think you see early it is 40, 44, five years back the situation yeah. was not like present. So due to huge plantation, so net carbon em emission has reduced. The members are getting financial benefit as because they are selling the fruits uh, and also the mature trees, uh, intake protein and different types of vitamins uh, from the fruits which they have consumed. And Grameen member also joined a government provided one forest program, we called it social foresting. So the members will join that program. The government will provide the saplings, it's a, either in the roadside or in the government uh, owned land. And the members will take care of the trees or gardens. And after certain uh, years, when the uh, trees become the matured, then the government sell the trees. The, and 70% uh, of the money goes to the members, 30% goes to the government. So yeah. they have also get, from getting financial benefit from this pro program also. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, example and sanitation, you know, better Mr. Hans, yeah. in the 16 decision, there are many aspects. Many aspects. Another very, very unique example I would like to share with you. This is very yeah. important. You know, as because due to the climate change and basically uh, 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 Almost frequently, almost every year in Bangladesh, we have severe flood, devastating flood. In 1988, there was a devastating flood in our countries. The water prolonged more than three months. The people have lost their lives, assets, livestock, everything even the government members also. At that time, World Food Organization come forward and proposed to Nobel Dear Professor Mahathir Yunus, okay, we will give you the wheat as a charity to give the Grameen members as they are in the difficulties. But as you know, Professor Yunus, and we had a reservation regarding the charity as because he always said, a charity dollar is one life, but social service dollar is endless life. But he did not agree. Again and again, World Food Organization insist, insisted him. Then finally he said, okay, I will take. But there is a condition. So what is the condition? I will not give free of cost. I will give to the members with a token price. And when the members will 
resume their normal life, then they will pay two taka per week. Yeah. Pay back and Ramin will form a disaster management fund. And from that fund, uh, from that money, Ramin uh, 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 formed disaster management fund and it's a huge fund. So now, if any kind of disaster, either flood, cyclone, tidal water, uh, 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 or migration, then this fund has been used and every year a portion of the profit will also go to this disaster fund. So it's a, you know, it, it, it is created in, in 80s just to mitigate the climate change effects. So this is also, uh, we, we can't claim it's a green, green microfinance, but it's a green micro, micro, microfinance or inclusive finance, no doubt at no, all. No. And, you know, and you know, due to climate change, migration is one of the very serious problem. That's because if river erosion or any other flood, the homes, homes and houses dis, dis, destroyed, people will move to the city or other places. So to address the, to mitigate this migration problem, what we did, we said, okay, we will have a transfer, member will be transferred from one branch to another branch. So if you are located in Dhaka city, okay, you now you migrated to Rangpur or Chittagang, so you, you, will, you will have a good chance to become the member of that branch also, yeah. from this branch to that branch. So on that way, that's why I said Ramin has a, a, a inclusive green uh, financing system. And there are oh. thousands of <laughs> examples. Absolutely. Let me let me join in in this in this thousand example, also for Alex and for David. I don't know, Alex or David, you ever been to Bangladesh. Uh, I lived seven years in India. I, I spent a lot of time in Tamil Nadu and I spent a lot of time in Kerala and in Orissa and in many other places. And when I went the first time to the Grameen villages, you know, and it was completely opposite because there was no plastic waste, there was nothing. So 80,000 villages where the Grameen Bank is at home is a real resilience only by how to take care of our villages. It's a real miracle. So uh, I really recommend it to do learning journeys once again, if it's possible to come in a bank and to see the villages by their own. It's a unique, uh, um, it's a very unique organic way how they grow. It's a big inspiration for green inclusive finance. So we had some questions out of um, the chat. I will try to bring them all in. And I will ask it to, to, to you, uh, uh, Alex and David, let me see. Um, I have I have the next questions and maybe this is good to you, um, uh, Alex. Is it how important is green bond and green inclusive finance? What's your opinion about it? How important are green bonds? Green bond and green and the green uh, inclusive finance. The the link between both, right? Yeah, exactly. That was how I interpret the question. Okay. Um, so these are completely, you know, different approaches. Uh, apart from the color, uh, they are very different because green bonds are using the largest projects and building even larger financial instruments. Green inclusive finance, because it's inclusive, starts with the smallest link. The smallest, the smallest link is the clients of the microfinance institution. And then smaller by smaller, you give, you know, you get um, up to a critical mass of, you know, funding uh, that you can, you know, propose to investor. Um, so instead of having a big infrastructure approach, um, you have a bottom up approach. Uh, but the, let's say the, the criteria, the key factors of success can be quite similar from um, the green bonds to uh, the green inclusive finance. Good. I have another question, David, to you. How does regenerative development differ difference from sustainable development? Very nice. Yeah, very nice. I think it's a nice, uh, this is a very nice question. And uh, yeah, I will tend to rephrase that uh, um, 
in a way in which uh, also how uh, you know uh, doing a finance or economy to achieve you know sustainable development goals to differentiate from uh, you know make transit trans transform our society to our uh, sustainable resilient society so that means uh, uh, being sustainable I mean, of course, there is a lot of discussion around this topic, and so will I just express my my own voice and experience? You know, is trying uh, um, to uh, you know to achieve certain goals, certain objectives, yeah, that being uh, uh, social or or, uh, or environment uh, to generate this kind of benefit with certain objective. Uh, regenerative, uh, it really means uh, that you will like to ensure that uh, the, gen the, the nature with whom you work with is able to regenerate itself yeah, and to propose uh, new solutions for the people that depend on it. So it's really a, 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 it's a huge transformation. It's like regeneration and transformative yeah, is what we need to look at, at. And I think sustainable is not to diminish it, is the path to go toward that or one of the paths to go toward that. But it's not just the, the objective is where we are we want to get objective to become more sustainable to then getting regenerable i so we can just jump to regenerate much better but sometimes yeah. we need to have a part. <laughs> that's definitely good a last question to you and then we go already uh back to alex and to abdul for the final but i give you all the question the next question so the dividend is the planting the trees or the contribution of reforestation for stabilization of nature could you give us an example, David. An example of where this happened? Where, the, where yeah. does it happen? Yeah. Now, this is a, so uh, I don't want to take so long, but um, maybe a, a small story. So I've been starting looking, uh, maybe I should have started uh, my intervention with this, but uh, let's end. Somehow life is somehow circular, someone believes. So, and also talks. So I'll be starting looking into microfinance and financial inclusion by reading the books of Professor Yunus. Yeah, that's many of us. Yeah, and I've been uh, implementing uh, this kind of approach for the first time, looking into a project. The back in time was called Proyecto Cambio. There was exactly the idea to pay back uh, the ecosystem services generated by planting tree while doing agriculture. Because I always thought I want to have, a, I would like to provide an impact while doing inclusive finance or microfinance. I've been trying to implement the first time idea of Mohamed Yunus uh, into this kind of approach of generating benefit uh, for the planet. And uh, I should say that in this kind, this project I've been working um, with was very interesting because paying back nature was exactly you motivate people. Uh, by system of incentive, decrease interest rate, have a longer term for loans, etc., to do not only do their usual practices, but to do in a better way. In that case, for example, we were really financing restoration of agriculture, reforestation, uh, protection of uh, water sources, etc., by planting trees that generate woods or fruit. And then after one year, people was going back and check for them. If I've been planting and growing the right way, uh, then the international community will pay back what is supposed to be the additionality you generate because you're generating new biodiversity, generating, uh, you know, you're absorbing carbon, etc. I should say two things on that. One, is it possible? Because we have experience and that's very interesting. Two, is it not enough? Because we have been seeing, of course, from the first assessment we did in this kind of project, that is very good in terms of motivation to pay back nature and people, but that is not gonna change the attitude of people. We really need, coming back to previous uh, uh, question, a transformative finance, because if you just pay for things that somehow people will do a certain way naturally, yeah, and uh, only for your credit, that will not transform life because people will keep on doing what they used to do. The one they're gonna cut trees with cut trees on the side, etc so we really need to pay for the ecosystem per se i will tend to believe rather than for the service they provide to us i think it's too much a restrictive view to say ah you know, a, a tree is growing in offsetting co2 uh, i'm not uh, cons i'm restoring this part of land so this provides service to the humanity so it's still too much human oriented we when i say sharing dividend for the nature 
one of it's... course could be interested for us but you know i pay to get the services but that should be a, i will tend to sell uh, almost i would say if it falls if a fake uh, social business because yeah you pay to the energy sorry pay to the nature nature gives you back you also would like to pay for things that don't come back to you because they're just own part to nature and this is still extremely rare and existent yet yeah absolutely no no i don't, don't really catch it i think also we should see much more from the human centric aspects into the planetary conscience into the way it all actions makes an action for other lives as well alex as a banker, as our friend from BNP Paribas, I think, um, uh, what do you think, what are the next uh, step, what you should go as a banking, what what would be your personal wish if you see green inclusive finance, if you see the inspiration, uh, do you have any wish to say in one sentence, because I know this machine will stop in three minutes automatically, it's Ubilo, so you have one minute time, and then the last one is to absolutely tell me about the best story where he implemented. But uh, Alex, what's your wish for the future? What I believe in is our capacity to have positive contagion. Uh, so we saw, you know, with the COVID that, you know, uh, one very small thing can disrupt, you know, the whole planet. What we want to show is that, uh, you know, having this, you know, uh, interlinked social and environmental concerns uh, uh, should actually be embedded into every, um, uh, good business decision. You know, it's 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 as as simple as simple as that. So what we want is actually um, to replicate this. You know, this type of this type of pilot uh, pilot to you know to the wider industry. And Alex, everyone can come to PMP Paribas from your clients to see how you how you grow. Abdul, can you tell me your thirty five years with Grameen uh, 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 family? You did so many replication. What was uh, one of your most joyful journey to replicate outside of Bangladesh microfinance? Yeah, thank you. It's because, uh, you know, I have started my career in 1981 with Professor Yunus as a branch manager of Grameen Bank. Yes, 81. 81, yeah. Uh, so it's a long way, no doubt at all. So in our side of uh, Bangladesh, I had different types of experiences. And it's a journey of thrill and joy, no doubt at all. Just I'll share with a very, very short time. I had an opportunity to perform a responsibilities in Grameen Kosovo project as a CEO <laughs> of Kosovo in 2000 to 2005, two years from Grameen Trust. At that time, I was uh, working in Grameen Bank, but deputed to Grameen Trust. Then Professor Lotipi sent me to Kosovo. Uh, yeah. You know, in Bangladesh, we never seen snow. Yeah. But, <laughs> in well, Kosovo, you do. <laughs> well, I was in Kosovo. It was minus 20 or 22 or something else. Yeah. We never uh, faced this type of temperature. So I was a little bit worried. Either I will survive there or not. Yeah. That, but after a couple of weeks, I tried to cope with that situation, weather, and everything. And what still I remember when I was visited one center, that is the number one center of Kosovo, Ramin. And I asked one lady about her impression on Gramin. She said, Mr. Khan, when Gramin come to Kosovo, We think as a woman, we have nothing to do. They offered money to us. We said, what we'll do? I, I don't know how to run the business, how to uh, exclusive the uh, uh, nothing else. 
but your manager always try to motivate, 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 come again and again, again and again. And finally, we formed the group and joined this program. And now I get the interest. Yes, I am getting different type of taste and different type of uh, inspiration from among myself. That, yes, I am not alone. Ramin is with me and other fellow members with me. And now I become entrepreneurs. Yeah. I'm running very good business. And yeah. uh, that's number one. Number two, just, it is also very important. In 2008, I was in Zambia, in Africa. We had one program in Zambia at that time. Uh, uh, funded by UNDP. UNDP invited to come in trust and then we have developed one program in Zambia. It was an excellent program, no doubt at all. So I have visited the branches, there is four branches. And finally, uh, uh, the last day of my visit, they arranged the gathering of the center chiefs. The center chiefs, they expressed their uh, reaction and gratitude to Grameen. So then most of the ladies said, Mr. Khan, Roshidul, Roshidul was the branch manager. <laughs> well, Roshidul is our God. As he came here, now we become a self-reliant woman. And to remember Roshidul, we named 10 of our newly born baby Roshidul not to forget the grammy. Yeah. So that's that's the joy. That's the joy. <laughs> Do it. Thanks a lot to, sh to, sh to share this joy. I know Kosovo is one of the best microfinance programs what we have. It runs 10,000s of women yeah. now today. Alex, thank you a lot for sharing your time. And as well, David, uh, we should definitely see how we keep on going. I have to close it here. Do it with joy is the most bestful way. Thanks a lot. We keep on walking, we keep on shaping, and we make the best out what we can do. Uh, we are not totally lost, even we are in a big disaster today. But with the next generation, uh, Alex, David, uh, be inspired by Grameen. It's a super uh, organization. And uh, once again, thanks for the time. And as I keep it bye-bye and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Alex and David.